The National Socialist idea of euthanasia developed from an idea which might be called the right to die. That is what we would call euthanasia today. If a person has a terminal disease and is suffering, should that person have the right to end that suffering? However, the Nazis expanded this from a mercy death to the destruction of life, unworthy of life. And of course, it was them who would decide whose life was unworthy of living. This idea in itself comes from eugenicists in the 19th century, above all in the United States and in Germany. So it came about long before the National Socialists actually came to power in Germany. Shortly after the seizure of power, or should I say the granting of power to the National Socialists in 1933, a law was passed which uh, forced people who had hereditary diseases to be sterilised. According to Hitler's doctor, Karl Brandt, and Hans Lammers, who was the civil servant responsible for the Reich Chancellery, Hitler had wanted as early as 1933 to kill the incurably ill, but he recognised that public opinion would not accept this. It needs to be made clear that Hitler did actually react to public re- opinion. He would sort of, it was a push pull sometimes when they saw there was a lot of opposition, they would then. Re- stop doing whatever it was that they were doing and have a go sometime later. In 1935, Hitler told Gerhard Wagner, who was then the head of the Reich Doctors' Association, that the question could not be taken up in peacetime. Such a problem could be more smoothly and easily carried out in war, Hitler told Wagner. And Hitler also added that he intended to radically solve the problem of the mental asylums in such an event. Wagner didn't live to see the beginning of the killings of the sick, or even the war for that matter, as he died of cancer aged 50 in 1939. He was succeeded by Dr. Leonardo Conti. One thing, however, this does show is that the Hitler was quite open about planning a war as early as 1935. Richard Kreschmar was a farm labourer married to Lina Kreschmar. He lived in the village of Pomsen, which is to the southeast of Leipzig. They were ardent Nazis. A son was born to them in 1939. The son, Gerhard, was born blind. He either had no legs or just one leg, or maybe he had one arm. The original medical records have been lost. It's not clear, and the second-hand accounts vary. Gerhard also suffered from convulsions. Richard Kretschmer took the newborn Gerhard to Dr. Werner Kattel, a paediatrician at the University Children's Clinic in Leipzig, and asked that his son be put to sleep. Kattel told him that that would be illegal. However, it was probably him who came up with the solution. In 1924, Kattel met Alfred Hoscher in Innsbruck, a psychiatrist who, together with the lawyer Carl Binding, wrote a book on the destruction of life unworthy of life. This book may well have influenced Cattell's thinking. In 1933, Cattell joined the National Socialist Medical Association and the National Socialist Party in 1937. Kretschmer wrote directly to Hitler, either at the suggestion of his own brother, or perhaps it was from Cattell himself. Thus, Cattell provided the solution. Kretschmar referred to his child as a monster and asked for his child to be put to sleep. Obviously, Hitler didn't read his own mail, but it was given to Hans Heffelmann, head of Department 2B, which dealt with requests. Heffelmann and Philipp Buhler, who was then head of the Chancery, showed the letter to Hitler, aware of his frequently expressed support for the mercy killing of people with severe disabilities. Hitler sent his doctor Karl Brandt to Leipzig to investigate with instructions that if the condition of the child was as as bad as the father had written, then the child could be killed. Cattell said that there was no chance of improvement ever. Somehow, I don't understand how, Cattell appears to have been given legal immunity, although of course by this stage of the National Socialist regime it would have taken a very brave prosecutor to initiate proceedings. I presume that Cattell had some kind of document 
maybe from Hitler or from Brandt, which said that he would not be held legally responsible. Of course, if this came to trial, this document would have been absolutely worthless. The Pomsen Church Register says that Gerhard Kretschmann died at Pomsen of heart weakness on the 25th of July 1939. Presumably, the child was killed with an injection, either by Cattell, although I accept it might have been Brandt, and, of course, there was no legal fallout. On the 18th of August 1939, either Brandt or Buller started a register of children with such health problems, uh, which was formalised by Hitler in October 1939, but backdated to the 1st of September 1939, the day the war broke out. The theory here was that in times of war, feeding such people was a luxury the state could not afford. The programme was called T4, named after Tiergartenstrasse 4 in Berlin where the head office was located. The first killing centre in the Reich was set up at Grafenegg and the mentally and physically challenged started to be murdered here as from January 1940 with use of gas. However, mass killings began earlier and it was here at this location in newly occupied Poland. Pieschnitzer Wielke is located to the north of Wejerowo. Initially, the Nazis murdered those Poles who lived in Pomerania, who they thought might be hostile to the invaders, but it did not take them long to start deporting the mentally and physically challenged from care homes in Germany. This, in turn, was followed by Fort 7 in Poznan in occupied Poland, where gas was used, I think, for the very first time. This in turn led to mass killings and in turn this developed into the Holocaust. I've done other videos on these subjects so if you are interested then you might want to have a look at what else I've actually done. What happened to these people after the war? Nothing further is known of the Kretschmar family. Their names only became public comparatively recently, although I'm sure that in a village like Pomsen, everyone knows. It of course needs to be pointed out that the killing of a deformed child in pre-industrial societies was quite common in many cultures. Werner Cattell was someone whose research did lead to scientific breakthroughs such as in the lesch nyndrom syndrome and he wrote textbooks on nursing. However, after the killing of Gerhard Kretschmer, he continued to kill children at his clinics in Leipzig. The records were destroyed at the end of the war, however the University of Leipzig now believes that there are around 500 victims. As far as Gerhard Kretschmer was concerned, Cattell, after the war, denied that he'd killed the five-month-old child. Leipzig was liberated by the Americans, but in accordance with the treaty obligation signed with the Soviet Union, it was handed over to the Red Army. Many chose to flee, not finding communism to their liking. One of those who fled was Cattell. In 1947, he was put before a denazification tribunal in Wiesbaden and once more in Hamburg in 1949. He was acquitted. In 1954, he received a chair in pediatrics at Kiel University. However, the news of his National Socialist past got out and the university gave him early retirement in 1960. Cattell gave an interview to Der Spiegel in 1964 in which he claimed that almost 2,000 completely idiotic, to use his words, children were born each year who should be killed because of their deformities or disabilities. He also described them as monsters. He bequeathed his assets to the University of Kiel on the condition that they set up a Werner Cattell Foundation for experimental and scientific research. This was rejected by the university in 1984. Werner Cattell died in Kiel aged 86 on the 30th of April 1981. Hans Heffelman was the person who brought Richard Kreschmar's letter to the attention of Adolf Hitler. He was very much involved in the T4 murder campaign, even setting up false companies that were involved in such areas as transporting the victims. His office was behind an organisation called the Reich Committee for the Scientific Recording of Hereditary and Serious Congenital Ailments, the aim of which was to find victims for the T4 campaign. 
After the war, he fled first of all to Innsbruck in Austria. On the 24th of June 1948, he received an entry permit for Argentina organised by Caritas. He emigrated there in October 1948. In Argentina, he worked as a carpenter's assistant, factory worker and mechanic. In 1951, he got a job running a foreign language bookstore and in November 1951, a German language bookstore. In December 1955, Heffelmann returned to West Germany and in February 1956 began working as the managing director of the Susses Clothing Company in Bavaria. The West German Attorney General Fritz Bauer was on his trail in 1964. He opened an investigation. Heffelmann was able to produce medical evidence that he had only around two years to live. This two years was to extend to 22 years which he spent in Munich. He died on the 12th of April 1986, aged 79. Philip Buhler, who brought the letter with Heffelmann to Hitler, committed suicide on the 19th of May 1945 at the Dachau internment camp after being taken prisoner by the Americans. Karl Brandt was captured at the end of World War II. He was the main defendant in the Nuremberg doctor's trial where he was sentenced to death. He was hanged, aged 44, on the 2nd of June 1948 at Landsberg am Lech. As a final comment, it needs to be stressed that the word euthanasia was used out of context by the National Socialist regime. A Polish author used the word pseudo-euthanasia, which I will try henceforth to use. During the time I was writing this, two things happened. The first was that I met someone who had taken his wife to Switzerland for the purpose of euthanasia. didn't talk to him about it, but I understand that those around him thought it was a very brave thing to do and he got a lot of support from his community. The second is that I learned from scanning the newspapers in a supermarket that UK TV personality and campaigner Esther Ranson is arguing for euthanasia to be made legal in the United Kingdom. What goes through my mind is that perhaps this would have been much easier to achieve had the Nazis not abused the term euthanasia in such a way as they did. I upload every Friday at 20 hundred hours my time. I'm based in Poland and in Germany. And if this is the sort of thing that interests you, then you might want to subscribe. And if you subscribe, you'll also be informed, I hope, of when I'm doing live broadcasts as well. For the moment, thanks for being with me today and all the best from me.